Hello, second graders. Another book that goes with um, East Africa and like lions at lunchtime is the book called The Greedy Zebra. Now in many countries, uh, parents and grandparents teach their children um, good ways, good ideas, and they do it through stories. This is called The Greedy Zebra. What do you think this is going to teach? Let's start. The Greedy Zebra. <laughs> long, long ago, all the animals in the world were dull, depressing color. No coats, no horns, no spots, no stripes, just dull and dusty until on a stormy day in the heart of leafy forests of Africa, there was a great rumbling in the earth and all of a sudden a huge cave appeared in the ground. A few of the animals crept cautiously up to this new and wondrous sight. And when the bravest of them peered into the darkness, he saw something glittering among the rocks. The cave was filled with furs and skins in gl all glossy and new. Stepping aside, he came across horns and tails of countless shapes and sizes and needles and threads of thousands of different colors. Trembling with excitement, he rushed out to tell the other animals what he had seen. The news spread far and wide and soon all the animals were on their way to the cave, running and jumping and sliding and swinging and slithering through the trees. That is all except Greedy Zebra. Greedy Zebra never stopped eating. He certainly wasn't going to give up a single mouthful for a silly old cave of any sort. Lots of time to go visiting caves, he mumbled. Greedy Zebra stuffing far too much in grass into his bulging mouth. Plenty of time, he said. Soon all the other animals in the jungle were gathered at the mouth of the cave, waiting for Elephant to speak. Elephant was the one who knew everything. He coughed pompously and addressed the gathering. It's time for all of you to have coats, he said. There are all kinds of materials here from which you may choose. You will be issued needles by rabbit, but it's the only needle you will get, so take good care of it. Now you may go in, no shoving and pushing, keep in an orderly line. Meanwhile, Greedy Zebra was eating, munch, munch. This particular grass is so delicious. He stopped to gape at the beautiful thing in front of him. Could it be? Was it Sable, the antelope? And she was wearing the most gorgeous new coat and horns. She was wearing horns. When Greedy Zebra heard that the coat and the horns came from the cave, he trotted off as fast as his little legs would carry him. But he couldn't resist a leaf here or a succulent blade of grass there. And oh, this patch was much too good to pass without taking a little bite. From time to time, he met other animals and then others. And still others. They were all wonderfully clothed animals, stopping for one last bite, not far from the cave. He watched Leopard finish her sewing. Leopard, as careful as usual, had sewn the most splendid fur coat with spots all over it. Greedy Zebra could not leave his eyes as he watched Leopard wiggle into the perfectly fitting fur. I shall have spots like that, he said to himself, and he hurried off eagerly to reach the cave. But it was such a hot day, so he stopped for a cool drink at the stream and came across a patch of the greenest grass he had ever seen. Delicious, he munched, munched, smacking his chubby lips. Back at the cave, most of the animals were leaving. Only rhino and elephant were still cutting their material. They had chosen a very strong gray cloth. Poor old rhino, who was very short-sighted, had stuck his horn on any old way and was having a terrible time. He was too nervous to ask Elephant for help because he knew the pompous animal would only make fun of him. Rhino had dropped his needle and the more frantically he searched, the farther into the bushes he kicked it. Finally, he put on his baggy coat and shuffled off in a very bad mood. Just then, Greedy Zebra trotted by with blades of grass bulging out of his mouth. 
I'll have spots like leopard, he was saying, and horns like kudu, and a mane like lion, and a tail like cheetah. I shall be the finest looking animal in the forest. At the risk of indigestion, he gave a short gallop into the cave. He stopped short, aghast. There was nothing left, no horns, no fine cloth, nothing. Frantically, he searched through the cave, but all he could find were a few strips of black material. Forlornly, he cut them all the same size and stitched them together. It looks very tight, he thought nervously to himself. Being such a fat zebra, he had a terrible time squeezing into his coat. He pushed and he grunted and he ooed and he odd and popped himself inside. But what a tight fit. It was nearly bursting at the seams around his fat tummy. He trotted down to the stream to take a quick bite of leafy bush when pop, the coat burst open. Pop, 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 pop. His t chubby tummy squeezed through the seams. How the monkeys roared with laughter. And to this, this day, his chubby stomach shines through his coat because he is so greedy, the greedy zebra.